Hello and welcome to Box of the Comics. I am your host, Chase Higgins, and this week we continue reading the Marvel Encyclopedia. We are almost done. We are on page... Page 154 out of 240. So we're a little more than halfway. So this week's episode, we cover S.H.I.E.L.D. So let's talk about S.H.I.E.L.D. Fast facts. The full name of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the Strategic Hazard Intervention Espionage and Logistics Directorate. Origin was it was founded by the U.S. government with the help of Tony Stark. Headquarters is the Shield Helicarrier. Abilities: Advanced Weaponry, Technology, Surveillance, Intelligence, Massive Manpower. Uh, Shield's allies are the Avengers, Sword, and the Secret Avengers. Its foes are Hydra, AIM, and the Masters of Evil. Shield declassified. Shield's flying cars. Stark Industries manufactures a wide range of flying cars for Shield. These armored sports cars not only fly at high speeds and altitudes, they can also travel underwater as submarines. Uh, some numbers to go with Shield is 3,000 active Shield agents prior to the superhuman Civil War. 550 miles is the maximum distance flown by a Shield flying car. 10 hours is the maximum oxygen supply inside the flying car. And Mach 2.1 is the Quinjet max speed. Uh, Some more shield declassified is robot replacements, life model decoys, or LMDs, are androids developed by shield to impersonate people. Externally, these robots are indistinguishably uh, are indistinguishable from living humans. They are controlled remotely and have superhuman strength as well. Some more shield declassified is that the Quinjets are originally created by Black Panther's Wakanda Design Group. They are often stowed aboard shield helicarriers, ready to transport agents for dangerous missions, even in space. Quinjets are capable of vertical takeoff and landings. Tony Stark wins the superhuman civil war and becomes director of S.H.I.E.L.D. after Maria Hill resigns. He designs a new red and gold helicarrier, makes improvements, and raises morale. Hmm. Quite interesting. Top four directors of S.H.I.E.L.D. Number four is Maria Hill, the strongest leader since Nick Fury has had more than one spell as director. Number three is Tony Stark, or Iron Man, director after the superhuman civil war is sacked for director after superhuman civil war is sacked for failing to anticipate the Skrull invasion. Nick Fury Sr., ageless director for 40 years, still active in team. And Rick Stoner, the first director assassinated by Hydra terrorist. Nick Fury has an odd an autonomous life model decoy known as Max Fury. It becomes so dangerous that Nick tries to destroy it, but the LMD gets away. Uh, when bad guys go good. Uh, Dark Reign Norman Osborn replaces Tony Stark, a.k.a. Iron Man, as director of S.H.I.E.L.D. after Stark fails to prevent the Skrull's secret invasion. Osborn renames the organization Hammer. The world is saved. S.H.I.E.L.D. is Earth's front line of defense combating global threats from supervillains. Terrorist S.H.I.E.L.D. is equipped with cutting-edge technology and commands a force of super blight uh, trained agents. So that's pretty cool. We also have the Fast and the Furious. They are father and son. They share the name Nick Fury and a common cause safeguarding the u.s and the world from all manner of threats as the men of shield fast facts full name is nicholas joseph fury strengths expert strategist fast combat experience from fast healing weaknesses blind in left eye disregard for roles and ethics allies dum dum duggan daisy johnson spider-man avengers shield secret warriors howling commandos foes are are axis red skull hydra Dr. Doom, and Taskmaster. Who are the Howling Commandos? They are a bunch of misfit but brave World War II soldiers. Sergeant Nick Fury leads them against Axis villains such as Red Skrull and Baron Von Strucker. Uh, So there is the first Nick Fury. That's the first one. 
And for the Nick Fury Jr., it's Nicholas Joseph Fury, formerly known as Marcus Johnson. Strengths are expert combatant. Infin- Infinity Formula in Blood gives even greater healing and anti-aging powers than Nick Sr. Weaknesses is he's blind in the left eye as well. Uh, allies are Avengers, Secret Avengers, Philip Coulson, Wolverine, Nick Fury Sr., S.H.I.E.L.D., U.S. Army Rangers. Foes are Orion, Taskmaster, and Leviation. Top six, Holly Commandos. At number six, we have Rebel Ralston, Killed Horseback Rider. Number five is Dino Minnelli, Dishing Actor with Mate Me Idol Looks. Number four, Jonathan Juniper, Eager Beaver, Ivy Leaguer, a College Graduate. Three is Gabe Jones, jazz trumpeter. Two is Izzy Cohen. He's a car mechanic. And number one is Dum Dum Dugan, circus strongman. How does Nick Fury Jr. lose his eye? Nick Fury Sr.'s enemy, Orion, wants to extract the infinity formula in the veins of Fury's son. Uh, his father and son stop Orion, but the villain takes Nick Jr.'s eye a spiteful act to make him look more like his father. Fury Sr. tricks a team of heroes into joining him on an illegal mission to overthrow villainous Latvian Prime Minister Lucia von Bardis. When it's over, he wipes the team's memories. Between the panels, the first issue of Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos appeared in 1963. Stanley and Jack Kirby were confident of success despite the comic book's rather unwildly title. Alternate Universe. On Earth-1610, Nick Fury is a test subject in Project Rebirth and given a super strength injection. He loses his eye in the Gulf War as S.H.I.E.L.D. director. He forms an Avengers task force called the Ultimates. As Nick Fury's dark deeds are punished when the Watchers force him to take dead Uatu's place, helplessly watching the events on Earth as the Unseen. Super Spy Soldiers. S.H.I.E.L.D. agents undergo rigorous spy school training, learning fighting techniques, how to use the latest technology, and much more. Most operatives are un- unswervingly loyal, and some even carry on serving after they are dead. Confidential. If you ever penetrate S.H.I.E.L.D. security, which is very unlikely, here are some faces you may- might meet. Phil Cheese Coulson, a high-ranking member, often homing his own elite Secret Avengers team, Agent 13, Sharon Carter, Peggy Carter's niece and longtime girlfriend of Steve Rogers. Quake, Daisy Johnson, can create seismic disturbances with her hands, causes such a shakeup in Nick Fury Sr.'s Secret Warriors team. Uh, Mockingbird, Barbara Bobby Morris, age ni- Agent 19, a baton-wielding biochemist and high-level agent. Dum Dum Dugan, Served alongside Nick Fury Sr. in World War II, one of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s first agents. Leo Fitz, British agent who has been on dangerous missions involving magic and demons. Gemma Simons not, uh, may only have a short time to live after being infected with AIM DNA bomb. Melina May Calvary, one of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s top agents with amazing fighting skills. Deathlock is every convert team should have its own cyborg assassin. And Nick Fury Jr., secret son of CIA agent Nia Jones and Nick Fury Sr., heads up the Secret Avengers initiative with Phil Coulson. I'm a guy with a plan, says Phil Coulson. When good girls go bad, Madame Hydra, the Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, is loyal to S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury's love interest for decades. Then she joins the terror group Hydra as the ruthless Madame Hydra. Mechanical Menace Modoc has a secret agenda when he teams up with S.H.I.E.L.D. He plans to kill the director, Maria Hill, but ends up crying tears of blood when he meets her. Love Punch. The first time Nick Fury meets the Contessa, he totally underestimates her combat skills. His embarrassment soon turns into love. So there are some shield soldiers. Shield operations. 
Battling terror groups, facing down supervillains, and dealing with sneaky extraterrestrial invasions is no easy task. Throw in a sudden outbreaks of, ter- of treachery and betrayal from within, and it's a wonder that S.H.I.E.L.D. is still going strong. Secret Warriors, when Nick Fury Sr., former director of S.H.I.E.L.D., uncovers a secret invasion of scrolls. He knows nowhere is safe, and he assembles the Secret Warriors, a young super-secret squad, some of whom have super-powered parents. If a mission is too strange, even for S.H.I.E.L.D., they send in the Howling Commandos, led by a life-model decoy of Dum Dum Dugan, with the help of Man-Thing, Hit-Monkey, Vampire, and Nineteen Abomination, Warwolf and more, the plant zombies and dark magic and the strangest monstrosities. These guys have it covered. Iron Man's short-lived role as director of S.H.I.E.L.D. ends with his armor goes berserk with an alien computer virus. He ends up being fired by the U.S. president himself. Team player. Captain America is a key player in many S.H.I.E.L.D. operations. His link with Nick Fury dates back to World War II. Cap has also had a close relationship with high-ranking operative Sharon Carter. Former agent Mentalo tries to conquer S.H.I.E.L.D. and control Nick Fury's mind. Luckily, Fury is able to tip off the S.H.I.E.L.D. espionage team, queuing Tony Stark to neutralize an H-bomb and win the day. Artist Leonardo da Vinci, physicist, I, physicist Isaac Newton, and astronomer Galileo Galilei were once members of the Brotherhood of the S.H.I.E.L.D. Long before the days of Nick Fury or the Avengers, these heroes were the first to defeat Galactus, the Brood, and the Celestials. Dastardly Hydra has been trying to topple S.H.I.E.L.D. since the World War II. Hydra's science division. Advanced idea mechanics infiltrates S.H.I.E.L.D. with LMDs and also tries to ruin Mr. Fantastic's fighting with a Vortex Bomb. In an alternate universe on planet Battleworld, the S.H.I.E.L.D. is a fortified giant wall that stands between Battleworld's inhabitants and a mixture of zombies, Ultron swords, and villainous monsters. So that is definitely a lot to be covered. But that was S.H.I.E.L.D., so I will show you this. Oh, hi, Green Man. How's it going? Um, so that was all of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'll go back so that way you can see it. But there it is. One, two. Here's the difference. Nick Fury's. Spy Soldiers, pretty cool. The top six most wanted foes. And then next week we start the uh, super villain teams. I know my green screen isn't working. That's because that's not how a green screen works, bud. But we're trying to still upload our Star Wars video. Uh, My brother actually dropped his phone when editing, so he got a new phone today. And so I don't know um, if we should still work on our Star Wars Episode 3 video or if we should just forget it and move on and film something else. I think I'm going to give it another week. And if we still can't figure it out, then I think we should just move on to uh, Spider-Man. Because we actually recently, um, we completed our Web of Spider-Man run, if you didn't know. But um, no, not on a jump kit. It's, It's a table. I'm actually sitting on a cooler. But let me see if I can show you. It's just a table with a microphone set up. But Web of Spider-Man is now complete. We have all, I think there's 126 issues. So that's pretty cool. It's our first ever full comic run. So now we're working on 90s X-Men and 90s Fantastic Four. Yeah, the mic's uh, the mic picks it up. It's a pretty good mic. 
picks up everything. There was one, uh, I think it was last week or one week where I had the garage door closed and it still picked up my brother. Yeah, I really like um, Web of Spider-Man. I thought um, I would really want to get like a full run. And I knew that I'd never be able to get a full run of Amazing Spider-Man because that's just going to keep going on and on. And so I was like, oh, I'll do Web of Spider-Man. And I actually really like it a lot better um, than older Amazing Spider-Man. And then I'm getting 90s Fantastic Four. So it's like from 300 to 400. And then 90s X-Men is the Jim Lee, uh, the Jim Lee run. So that'll be interesting. And then once I have all three of those, I might have to go to DC, but I'm not sure where to start with DC. I guess I pick a character and collect from there. So maybe I do Batman. And then with Batman, maybe just collect collect like the 90s Batman or maybe even Detective Comics. I don't know. Oh, really? How? Um, that's cool. So you have 22 more to go. Is there a reason why you're stopping after 100 and not getting the full series of Web of Spider-Man? Or are you just like, let me get 100 and call it a day? Because like, I got, I started with the, I think there's 12 annuals. I was like, oh, these are actually pretty good annuals. So that's why I collected the other 122 issues of um, Spider-Man. But yeah, I, I'm usually pretty good about getting my comic books because I get paid every other week with my job. And so I go down to my LCS and I'm able to pick up from between 20 to 40 books, just depending on the price range. And I usually get, uh, get them from the $2 bin. And so they're actually really good shape. There's some every once in a while, I'll like read through them and then pages will fall out. Or I've had one where I just open it and it's not even stapled together anymore, but that's actually very rare for me. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that's kind of like what I did with Fantastic Four and X-Men because I wasn't sure like where to start. So I was like, well, I'll start with the 90s run. And the 90s is Jim Lee. So with the Jim Lee X-Men, there's, I think there's a little over 100, maybe 105. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I have some of those. And then I also have my uncle gave me some Fantastic Four comics when I was younger and he was getting rid of them. And so I just chose the 90s Fantastic Four because that's what he gave me. And so um, I thought that would be a cool place to start. And I also feel like the 90s is a good time like to collect comic books as well. But um, yeah, that's really all I have. But um, thanks for joining me, Gray Man. I appreciate it. But I have to, I have to go. I have some homework to finish up and whatnot. But um, I think Stanables is going live too tonight. I don't know if you're going to watch them or not, but I will see you later. Thanks again for joining.